Welcome to Electron Online and now let's do a good application problem for the diffraction. Here we have a single, uh, single slit a diffraction pattern on the screen and the question is what is the angular width of the diffraction pattern? What is the distance, the angular distance from the first minimum on one side to the first minimum on the other side which is in other words what is the width of the central maximum in angle, the angular size. Alright, so we know that that's going to be twice the lookup or yeah, the lookup angle theta. Theta would be the angle from the slit to the first minimum on one side and of course it would also be theta from the slit to the first minimum on the other side. So the width, the angular width would be two times the lookup angle. We also know that there is a relationship between the phase difference and the lookup angle. We know that the phase difference is equal to the extra distance traveled by the top portion of the wave in respect to the bottom portion of the wave or the other way around depending upon which direction we're going divided by the wavelength times 360 degrees or 2 pi. Let's do it in terms of radians for now. 2 pi radians. The extra distance traveled of course phi is equal to um, that would be a the slit width a times the sine of the lookup angle divided by theta times 2 pi. Alright so we're trying to find theta in terms of phi. Now what is phi equal to when we reach our first minimum? Well that's the phase difference between the top and the bottom half of the beam and that would have to be equal to 2, uh, two theta, um, no not 2 theta, I'm sorry, that would have to be equal to 2 uh, <laughs> uh, that would have to be equal to 360 degrees or 2 pi, one complete cycle because then you would be down the first half the beam would cancel out the second half of the beam and that's when we'd have our first minimum so the requirement is that phi has to be equal to 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. Alright, so what we then have is we have 2 pi is equal to a times the sine of theta divided by lambda times 2 pi and of course then 2 pi cancels out on both sides we can bring lambda across we have lambda is equal to a times the sine of theta. Now of course we're dealing with very small angles here so therefore the sine of theta equals the tangent of theta or what we can also say is that in the limit in the limit as theta goes to zero we can say that the sine of theta divided by theta is equal to one which implies that theta is equal to the sine of theta. Alright, so for small angles we can get away by replacing sine of theta by theta as long as theta of course is in radians and so therefore the wave, the wavelength is equal to a times theta or theta is simply equal to the wavelength divided by a. Okay, here we have an a, the slit width is 0.1 millimeters and lambda is 500 nanometers. So when we plug those numbers in we get 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters divided by 0.0001 meter which is a tenth of a millimeter and let's see what we get here. So 500 e to the 9 minus divided by 0.0001 equals that will be 5 times 10 to the minus 3 so it's equal to 5 times 10 to the minus 3 that would be in radians of course. Since we know that the width of the central maximum is 2 times theta we therefore know that alpha is equal to 2 times theta which is equal to 2 times 5 times 10 to the minus 3 radians so twice that would be equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 2 radians. All right. Now converting that to uh, radians or to degrees we have to multiply it times 180 degrees divided by pi and I had just forgotten what that number was. Is it 53.7? Is it 57.3? Wasn't quite sure so I'll multiply this times 180 divided by pi equals and I get 0.573 so that would be 0.573 degrees and that would be the radial size of the central maximum. Hmm, pretty interesting. Yeah, and it turns out it is 57.3 degrees per radians. <laughs> when I think about it, I just couldn't think of the right number. All right, so that's how we do that. So a little bit of manipulation, understanding of the relationship between the phase difference and the lookup angle. And twice the lookup angle will give us the angular size of the central maximum. And then we have to do a little bit of manipulation to get to the final answer. And that's how we do that.